important tip number one, when we talk about real-time collaboration is to use Onshape's sharing tools. And the reason I stress this is this is how you'll get, you know, that real-time collaboration um, that you're used to in other systems. If you're using Google Docs, for example, and you want to collaborate in real time. And, and of course you can export files and you can do a traditional workflow where I export my data out of Onshape and I email it to someone and they work on it and send it back. But of course the benefit of Onshape is the fact that multiple people can work in the same environment in real time, collaborate. Now the key to this of course is sharing. In the top right hand corner of the document interface, you'll see this big blue button that says share. If you click that button, it brings up a dialogue. You type in either the name, the email address of the person that you want to share with, and you define their permissions. You click share and they are sent an email, right? They can click a link and they can literally interact in real time in the same document with you. So, as I mentioned, this is the starting point. We talk about real-time collaboration. The first step to any real-time collaboration is of course sharing. Now, sharing can be done a number of different ways. I'm going to go over an example of a different technique in just a moment. But let's look at the most basic example of how to share. So here I am in my hydraulic steering pump, and I want to share this document with someone. I want to collaborate in real time. So step number one, as I mentioned before, is to share. You'll see the big blue button here at the top says share. I click share, right? And it brings up the share dialog. Now, you can actually see that I've shared this with other people and teams, in fact. So I've already shared this with others, but let's add another person. I'm going to add Neil to this, right? So I'm now adding Neil. I just typed in his email address and I define his permissions. In this case, you have edit and view, but you also have these check boxes showing you individual permissions um, that are more granular. Things like, do you want them to be able to copy? Do you want them to be able to export, add comments, delete, or reshare, you know, share it with someone else? So those are all explicit permissions that you can define independent of edit and view. Um, and it really gives you a lot of granular control over what that person can do, right? If all I want them to be able to do is view, you can't comment, can't export, can't copy. Um, I really have a lot of control over what that person sees. But collaboration in real time, uh, in this case, involves Neil and Neil's ability to edit that data. Right. And so all I do is I click share. Right. And what happens is Neo gets a notification. If he's not in on shape, he gets an email and he can then jump into that document at the same time. Right. So I'm going to give you an example of what it looks like from both perspectives. Right. So I'm going to slide this over here. Bear with me for a moment. And I'm going to bring in Neil. So we have Neil on the right and myself on the left. So here you'll see um, I have the same document open with two individuals. Now these two individuals could be in the same room. They could be on different parts of the world. But the important thing to stress is they're collaborating in real time. And you'll actually see little visual cues that someone else is in the document. So right next to the share icon in the top right corner, those are what we call social cues that are the collaborative cues that we give that, hey, someone else is in this document. If that person switches tabs, let's say that Neil wanted to go in and look at the pump housing part studio, you'll see that the tabs are also switched. That indication is switched on my side. So I'm always aware of what tab Neil is in. If Neil were to go to the pump housing tab, right, and make an edit, let's say, you know, Neil edits extrude one. Onshape is going to tell me, hey, Neil's in here editing extrude one. So I get real time collaborative feedback as to what's going on. And this is essential because we are working on the same da data set, same exact part. You're not looking at two copies of the pump housing. You're looking at the same pump housing being edited by two people. So we give you social cues that allow you to collaborate in real time. That also means that the changes are made in real time, right? And so when I go to, you know, make a change to, in, for, you know, for instance, um, to a pump housing or to the assembly, anyone that's in that document will instantly see a change, right? So let's just make a real dramatic change to the appearance, for example. Let's make it dark blue. 
what you'll notice is the moment I click OK as Neil, right, it instantly updates for me on the left. And that's because, again, we're not sharing data sets. I'm not sending files back and forth. I've allowed Neil into my document, right? And that's a, a key architectural difference and one of the big differentiators of Onshape is that ability to have a single source of truth that's always up to date and allows you to really maintain, you know, um, that structure of information without passing references and files back and forth. So that's the first tip. It's the starting point of real-time collaboration is use the share dialogue. Now, one final comment I would add to this, let's go back out to full screen here, is you can edit or delete the permissions at any time, right? So if I, if I work with Neil for a short period, and then I later decide, you know what, I'm done working with Neil, he no longer needs access, I can just kick him out of the document by clicking the X, right? And what you'll see is that he will be removed from the document and he can now, you know, work on other work or whatever it may be, but he no longer has access to your document, right? You can also edit the permission. So if, for instance, there's a period where I needed to allow Brad to edit, but now I no longer do, I can change those permissions, right? I can change them on the fly. So giving someone access to your document doesn't mean they have endless access to your data set. They just have access for the period that you define, and you can always change those share permissions in the share dialog. So that's tip number one. I know it sounds basic, but that's the starting point. A lot of users we still find are, are exporting and importing files when sharing is a much more effective you know, mechanism uh, for doing that.